So question 14 then from the 2015 Advanced Tire Maths. A little four mark question, the last of the little questions before the big four, the big dens at the end. It's just about odd and even functions. So no matter what f is, this says show that g is an even function and h is an odd function and show that this thing, whatever it is, can be expressed as the sum of an odd or even function. Well, obviously it connects backwards. But anyway, the first part is going to be knowing what an odd and an even function actually are. Well, an even function means that the value at x is the same as the value at negative x. So that f of negative x is the same as f of x. In other words, it's symmetrical about the y-axis. An odd function has the value at negative x is the opposite, but the same value. It's the negative of the value of x. The value at negative x is the negative of the value at x. So again, it's got symmetry, but it's got half-turn symmetry. So knowing that then, you proceed to answer the first part. Show that g of x is an even function. That means testing which of these cases apply. If you put negative x into it, which do you end up with, if any, or either? So g of negative x would be feeding negative x into that. That would be f of negative x plus f of the negative of negative x. Well, I'll show it that way. The negative of negative x. Which, of course, is f of x plus f of negative x, which, of course, is the same as g of x. So g of negative x is equal to the g of x, which means you can state then that g is an even function. Now, there'd be two marks here, showing that's one mark, but the first mark is just for knowing how to approach odd and even functions. So this business of putting a negative in to see what happens would demonstrate that. The same with h. Let's test h. Put negative x into h and see what comes out. Well, that would be putting negative x into this, minus, and of course the negative of that would be just x, should be able to do that this time because I've already demonstrated that there. Now, how does that look like this in some way? Well, if I put that the other way around, I've got the negative of f of x plus f of negative x. And if I take that negative out, I've got f of x minus f of negative x. So h of negative x, that's a bit of a mess, it's even worse, I should have left it alone, is equal to this. And that is what you started with. It's the negative of what you started with. So I can say h of negative x equals the negative of h of x. And that tells me that h is an odd function. That's worth a mark. And again, the last part said, hence show that f of x can be expressed as a sum of an even and an odd function. Well, of course, if g can be expressed in terms of f, and h can be expressed in terms of f, then f can be expressed in terms of both of them, and you would simply add them together to do that. If I call that 1 and I call that 2 and I add them together, 1 plus 2 would give me 2 lots of f of x would equal g of x plus h of x, which means that f of x would be a half of that, or it said the sum, so I'll put down two separate terms, a half of g of x plus a half of h of x. There's a wee note here that putting that on its own wouldn't be sufficient for the last mark. You'd have to also write down a little conclusion, which would be easily forgotten. I would have done that. So you'd have to state the obvious, in other words, which is, since g is even, and h is odd, that means that f is the sum of an even and odd function. Now you get the last mark. Of course, if you wanted, you could put the little x's in, where I haven't bothered before, but strictly speaking, g, h and f are the names of the functions.